Welcome to week three of St Anne's study of the first letter of John. This week we're looking at chapter three and we are covering God's love for us, our love for God and our love for each other. Last week Chris reminded us that this letter of John isn't addressed to any church or group of Christians in particular and so I think that it's meant for us today as much as it had been for the followers of Jesus stretching back in time since it was written. This week we're going to be looking at the subject of love. God's love for us, our love for God and our love for each other from the universal or Catholic point of view that Chris spoke about last week, agape love. Throughout the letter of John there are three love themes. Who we are as loved children of God, what we say about that love, and how we live out God's love. But in reality, of course, they overlap, so it's hard to separate them out. Right at the start of this chapter, John makes it clear that God loves us so much that he calls us his children. But then he goes on to say, even though this is so, what isn't clear is what we will become until the time that Christ appears. What do you think John means when he says that it isn't clear what we will become? In his letter, John repeats the commandments that we should love one another. He says this five times, twice in this chapter and three times in chapter four, which Steve will be reviewing with us next week. So we know there's no mistake in what he's trying to get across to the readers. We've probably come across an old adage that says, if you want someone to remember something that you're trying to teach them, tell them, tell them again, tell them again, and then get them to tell you. John wants to make sure that the readers of this letter understand that love is not an optional virtue for a believer. Love is a distinguishing mark. And how do we know what kind of love this is? John says, this is how we know what love is. Christ gave his life for us. Jesus' actions were deliberate. They were a willful act that demonstrated his love for us, which means that love is a matter of will rather than emotion. Think about this agape love as an attitude. Love as actions. Love as decisions. What things come to mind when we look at God's love for us, our love for God and our love for one another under each of these headings? Love as actions, love as an attitude, love as a decision. Jesus also illustrated his love for God and for people by the life that he lived. He never showed hatred or malice. He only got angry over injustice, but that was motivated by his love for God and for people. He went out of his way to help those whom even the Jews despised. He crossed racial, cultural and geographical barriers to care for people. He reached out to the unlovely and the outcasts of the world. It's as though Jesus was asked, how much do you love us? And he stretched out his arms and said, this much. And because this was the love that Jesus demonstrated, it should be no surprise that the new commandment he gave us was, as I have loved you, so you must love one another. If you have love for one another, then everyone will know that you are my disciples. In his letter, John reminds us of this in verse 11. But we know from experience that sometimes it's hard to even like one another. And we talked about this last week, how we address disputes, disagreements and personality clashes. 
And for those who were with us last week, if you've had any other thoughts, then we can discuss them when we meet on Tuesday on Zoom. But let me ask you a question. If people who aren't Christians judge our Christian lives on the basis of our love for one another, would we pass that test? And then in verses 4 to 10, John talks about love in two ways. Loving each other and loving God is about walking in his ways, obeying his commandments. This isn't always a popular thing to suggest, because what it's saying is, in order for us to give and experience love, we need to do it according to God's ways. A lot of people, me included at certain times in my life, shy away from this whole idea of living God's way. And he goes on further in verses 14 and 15. And John doesn't take any prisoners, as you'll hear. We have left death and come over into life. We know it because we love others. Those who do not love are still under the power of death. Those who hate others are murderers, and you know that murderers do not have eternal life in them. These are very hard words to hear. With John, there are no wishy-washy grey areas in his description of people in their relationship with God. The only two classifications are the spiritually alive and the spiritually dead, a child of God or a child of the devil, a believer or an unbeliever. Everybody belongs to one or the other. So this is a view of love on God's terms. Do you think that seem, this seems to be a tough message in our modern world? Is there a temptation to say that we want to be loved on our terms and not be bound by the commandments to love one another as God loves us? And let me ask another question. From the world's point of view, how well has love on our own terms worked so far? John goes on to point out, if we are rich and see others in need, yet close our hearts against them, how can we claim that we love God? Many of us have enough material possessions and we can't avoid seeing others in need. But does our richness only relate to material possessions? Or are we also rich in our knowledge of God's love for us and how we should be living our lives? How do we choose a wise response on a scale of, say, one to five, from being overwhelmed by people's needs to being hard-hearted in our response to them? How do we discern what's the right standard of living in our world? John goes on to say that Christian love is practical. My children, our love should not be just words and talk. It must be true love, which shows itself in action. John contrasts words versus action. To love in words means simply to talk about a need, but to love in action means to do something about meeting those needs. Christian love doesn't just say, I love you. It gets its hands dirty and its feet dusty, and it engages its heart. How would you respond to someone who says, we don't need to talk about Jesus anymore. We just need to demonstrate the love of Christ through what we do. We may think that Christian love expressed in daily actions of service and help may not equal much, but when you add them together, it equates to a lot. In what ways does our church show love in actions as well as words, both to the people within our church fellowship and in the surrounding community? And how do we discern what God is calling us to do in future? Thank you for joining this study. I hope you found food for thought.
If you found it interesting, then please join us for a Zoom discussion on Tuesday evening at 7.30pm. You can find joining instructions by going to the St Anne's website and clicking on the green banner that says St Anne's during coronavirus. We hope to see you then. God bless.